Hi folks, so thank you as always for your patience because in the last video that I did related to the full moon in Pisces, I had addressed the fact that there were some important transits coming up around the 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th of September and I said that I would be doing videos around them and that those dates were important. They were important enough that I myself was dealing with enough during that time. As you can tell, I'm in a different location currently and there's nothing, there's nothing um, sad or um, there's nothing negative about that. So, but but it has been an active, it's been an active time, and so it's been hard to find the time to really focus and do videos. And I'm delighted to say that I feel like I'm back on track. And specifically, between September the third and even the eighth, we had Venus going direct on the third. We had um, we had of course. Jupiter going retrograde on the 4th of September and then between the 5th and the 6th and the 8th we had these important transits from the sign of Virgo. We had a retrograde Mercury trining Jupiter and Taurus. We had most importantly a retrograde Mercury conjuncting the Sun on the 6th of September and then on the 8th of September we had the Sun trining, um, trining Jupiter in, um, trining Jupiter in, actually no, trining Uranus. Um, no trining Jupiter, trining Jupiter in Taurus. So we had, specifically, one more time, Venus going direct, yay. Jupiter going retrograde, okay, happens every year for about four or five months, and we've been surviving it every year, and I'll talk about it more in a future video. Um, it's not nearly as earth-shattering a transit unless you have Jupiter retrograde in your birth chart, in which case it's, I find, a wonderful transit. So more on that later. We have Mercury uh, and the Sun meeting up on September the 6th, but on its way Mercury trining Jupiter and the Sun as it left that conjunction trining Jupiter on the 8th. So, so, so Mercury and the Sun come together and trine Jupiter in Taurus and Mercury and the Sun are in Virgo. Okay, those are the three families of transits that we need to address. And the Mercury and the Sun uh, trining Jupiter and conjuncting will be addressed in the new moon in Virgo video because they're important and relevant to that particular um, video, which is going to be coming up. The new moon, the next new moon is in the sign of Virgo and it is on the 14th of September in four days time. What I wanted to do in this video, after all that has been said and done, and reassure you that those transits will be addressed, although I have said quite a bit about Venus and Mercury retrograde going direct and all that kind of stuff in a few past videos, but, but I will talk about those. I want, to, I want to start where we left off, and I want to pick us up from there. The full moon in Pisces that occurred on the 30th of August was conjunct Saturn. And we are now four days away from a new moon. I want to focus in this particular video on lunar things. Because I think that no matter what is going on, as we have planets starting to go direct, like we do with Venus, and as we have planets like Mercury, entering the last four or five days of retrograde before they go direct. Mercury goes direct on the 15th of September, uh, one day after the new moon in Virgo. Um, a lot of the energy and a lot of the transits that I addressed a few minutes ago are still operating very much in the background. There's a revving up, there's a preparation, and we should be feeling that. And indeed, with every passing day, we're going to be feeling it more and more. But before we completely lose out on the lunar energy, because with every passing day, we're going to feel that full moon in Pisces fade away from us. I want to first talk about that full moon in Pisces one more time with regard to where we are at right now, because we may have found whatever is going on with all the other transits, I think that it is the lunar influence that we're feeling the most. The full moon in Pisces conjunct Saturn likely brought us important lessons with regard to how to be sober, serious, responsible, how to be effective, and how to 
not be casual about certain things, how to work responsibly and represent ourselves responsibly in certain situations. Some of what these situations would have been would have been relevant to where Pisces sits in your chart, what house it occupies. And um, some of, and, and the full moon in Pisces video that I did, that which is the last video I did, explains, I think, that part of the energy well and completely, where we have a full moon in Pisces that brings attention to how to take the Pisces part of our chart seriously, shows us upcoming, and perhaps for a certain amount of time based on what we've committed to, responsibilities in the Pisces part of our chart that we need to pay attention to and keep an eye on because the new moon in Virgo coming up may well give us an action plan or, um, yeah, an action plan with regard to how to address some of those responsibilities. Remember that new moons and full moons happen in related opposite signs. Pisces and Virgo are opposite each other. The house that Pisces occupies and the house that Virgo occupies are opposite each other, and therefore they are always in conversation with each other. Whatever this, uh, whatever the subject matter of one house is, the other house is the opposite of that. So if the first house stands for us, the seventh house stands for the other relevant or critical party with whom we have some sort of commitment. If the second house stands for our income and our resources, the eighth house stands for what we share, what we owe from uh, to others, what others owe to us. Um, if the third house is mundane, day-to-day, -day, regular communication, I'm being very, very, I'm focusing on, you know, very, very, spe the ninth house is about removed learning and sort of communication with spirit. If the fourth house is the domestic sphere, the tenth house is the public sphere. If the fifth house is us as a solo player and a solo party in our self-expression and our creativity and our creations, the 11th house is us as part of an ensemble, a collective, a group. If the sixth house is the busiest part of our chart, our chores, our responsibilities, our responsibilities to our self-care, our responsibility to the care and the execution of our commitments and our chores and our work and our job and, our, and, and, and caretaking, the 12th house is a house of surrender, release, and um, if you like, repose, um, isolation, relaxation. So, so when new moons and full moons happen, they happen in opposite houses. Now, sometimes the new moon will happen before a full moon. New moon happens 14 days after a full moon happens. So a new moon happens in house one, and the full moon happens in the opposing house 14 days after. Sometimes, as in right now, the full moon happens in the relevant house first and two weeks later the new moon happens in the opposite house. So the full moon in Pisces conjunct Saturn may have pointed out responsibilities and where we need to get real and what we need to tackle and what we need to have a plan of action around in the Pisces part of our chart and I and I've talked about the fact that the Pisces part of our chart has been in some sort of crisis since 2013, 14, 15, 16, 14, 15, 16, certainly culminationing, sort of exploding around 2015, 16, and, and, and how with Saturn now finally in Pisces and the North Node in about a year and a half getting ready to go into Pisces, we we will we, we will have the opportunity to we we will need to contend with putting some of these fires out and managing the Pisces part of our chart and putting some, um, uh, not letting it be such a drain, you know, it, it's, it, you know, it, it, Saturn, Saturn since March of this year has been alerting us and asking us to take the Pisces part of our chart seriously and the issues and our responsibilities there more and more seriously and we're going to contend with them over the next couple of years. So with this full moon, there was a Saturn going, here is what, needs to be dealt with and here are possible and and it has set you up you know we've had mars go through the sign of virgo opposing saturn opposing neptune mercury uh opposed saturn when it came in went retrograde gonna go direct on the 15th and as it gets ready to leave uh the shadow uh period the shadow degrees will oppose neptune again at, at, towards the end of um, October, towards the end, of, excuse me, towards the end of September as it gets ready to enter Libra. Um, 
uh, uh, Venus, the, the Sun, opposed Saturn and is going to get ready to oppose Neptune right after this, around the time of the new moon in Virgo. Venus is going to enter Virgo uh, in the in uh, around October 8th or 9th, I believe, or somewhere there, and is going to oppose Saturn and oppose Neptune. So all these planets from the sign of Virgo are saying, all right, Virgo, you know, the house where Virgo sits and what that house stands for and any people or things associated with that. What are we going to do to serve this crisis in the Pisces part of our chart? It could be a crisis and lingering issues from the, the 2014 to 16 period. It could be new responsibilities and new things that have been taken up in the Pisces part of our chart that need that attention. Why am I coming back and talking about this? I'm coming back and talking about this because we're getting ready to... The, the transits in Virgo are continuing and accelerating and Mercury is going direct on the 15th and we have the new moon on the 14th and Venus is going to enter at the end of the first week of October. So whatever it is that this full moon in Pisces has whispered to us, has put in front of us, is going to start to get more and more action in terms of execution. <coughs> and I would encourage you to let it fuel action and activities and building and creating something in the Virgo part of the chart so that not only the Virgo part of the chart can flourish and serve you, but it can also serve and manage what needs to be managed in the Pisces part of our chart. I'm not looking at your individual charts. I can't hone down this on, on this more specifically, but I'm going to just say this generally so that you can think about it. The other thing is that the Pisces full moon was conjunct Saturn for everybody. And so everybody was dealing with this full moon. Not only would this full moon have been felt and would it have revealed something emotionally and intuitively to you in the Pisces part of your chart, the bottom line is we were all dealing with a full moon conjunct Saturn. So it could be in other parts of our lives too because we're dealing with everybody else ricocheting with this kind of serious full moon energy. We could, be, we could have multiple areas where this full moon on the 30th and you know with Saturn conjuncting the full moon even till now even till the Virgo new moon it will not surprise me if for some reason in some ways you are processing the full moon when you have a full moon conjunct Saturn and there are things that have hit us since that time so all you have to do is think back to the 30th of September what has happened since then? And if you look to the first, second, third of October, where did you feel things intensely? When it comes to the Pisces part of your chart, I'm more interested in what occurred as you headed towards the 30th of September and the 1st of September. When it comes to dealing with the cumulative effect of the full moon insofar as it affected everybody on this planet, and there may be other areas or other types of lessons that may have made their presence felt in our lives. I would encourage you to look at heading to the 30th, but also September 1st, 2nd, 3rd. There was a lingering aftershock of this full moon with regard to what we've been contending with, and we're still processing things. Some of this has to do with the fact that Mercury is still retrograde, so the idea of processing and, and, and was getting ready to conjunct the sun on the 6th of September. Um, I would encourage you to do two things. Some part of the next four days as you head towards the new moon in Virgo, you're likely going to be feeling a pull that we've been feeling during this entire retrograde season. We've had Venus retrograde till very recently. We still have Mercury retrograde. By all accounts, these retrogrades point to the fact that till until September the 18th, 19th, 20th, we should really not be committing to very much or doing anything and nothing should be manifesting. But the fact of the matter is we had a new moon in Leo in the middle of all this time, about three and a half weeks ago, trining the North Node. We're going to have a new moon in Virgo, trining Uranus and opposing Neptune. The fly in the ointment being that Mercury is going to be stationary practically at that time because Mercury doesn't go direct till the day after, which colors the next four weeks into the middle of October. So this push and pull of these lunations and these new moons that are very forward-looking and that are pushing us forward, 
Trining the North Node is our purpose, our calling. Trining Uranus is our sense of independence and liberation. And both of these are related to the Aries Taurus part of the chart because the North Node is an Aries. But remember that the, 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 the time of the full moon in Pisces, we were also two months before the October 28th eclipse. And so we had echoes of that eclipse that we've had to contend with as well. The reason why this has been such a complex retrograde time is that while the general rule when Venus and Mercury would be retrograde would be for us to say that we're just going to sit back and we're going to observe and we're going to piece things together and we're going to see what comes up and we're not going to commit to anything. We've had these lunations and these trines and these squares from Leo and Virgo to these important planets, I'll just use that word broadly, in Aries and Taurus that have also been pushing us forward. So a lot of people have seen things manifest or come together. The energy of forward movement does not show up clearly till the October 14th eclipse. It starts to show up more and more as we head past Mercury going direct on the 15th and the new moon in Virgo. As we head to the end of September and into October, you know, the gates clear more and more and more and we gather more and more unqualified momentum. Not this momentum of evaluating our... But of course, everything works together to tell the same story. So while we've had these forward-moving aspects, lunations, new moons that we are contending with and continue to contend with, We've had Venus going, well, but if you are going to move forward, who's going to be in the boat with you relationship-wise? And um, how are you going to manage your finances? What is your financial reality? What are you going to be spending on? What are, how are you going to get real about your finances and your spending so that you can support where it is that you want to go since July the 23rd? Um, the new moon in Leo was August 16th. So we've had this entire... And, and now that Venus is direct since the 3rd, I would not be surprised if many of us are moving forward tangibly having made some decisions with regard to who's going to be in the boat and getting real about what we need to do financially as well. Um, so in the complexity of this time, as we head into the last four days of the Leo new moon month and get ready on the 14th of September to start the Virgo month, I think a Virgo season is really starting on the 14th of September. I know, I know, I know. Different people look at things differently. Um, I want you to ask yourself two questions. This is really what this video is about. Number one, what lessons have been learned as a result of this Pisces full moon if you go back to the 30th of August, September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, around that time, even to now that you are processing, that carries a certain amount of emotional weight, because that could be something. An emotional weight is very much referring to a full moon conjuncting Saturn. What are the lessons that have been learned? And in those lessons, what points to your role or your responsibility in something getting emotionally charged up? Because Saturn is most interested in you looking at the consequences of your actions. That doesn't mean that somebody else was not at fault or somebody else was not working, were reacting emotionally, that somebody else was not doing things that were full moony and charged up and everyone was kind of irrational and emotional and heightened and dramatic and tantrumy and um, misbehaving perhaps a little bit and all that kind of stuff. If that's if that works to your reality, if that if this if this resonates, I think it is worth it to take a step back because Chances are with a full moon conjunct Saturn, over the next three or four days, you might seek to resolve, to put the full moon in Pisces to bed in that regard, to emotionally deplete the cup. Remember, at the time of a new moon, a wave starts to move to the shore. Full moon, it crashes to the shore, it's at its maximum energy, and then it starts to retreat back. And as we head to the last few days before new moon, the wave is really pulling back to the shore to get ready for a new new moon, a new month. And so one of the things to do then is to look at, and if you want to just combine it with lessons, lessons, just kind of 
dotting the I and crossing the T around lessons related to the full moon in Pisces and lessons and processing related to Venus retrograde. Who is in the boat with you moving forward relationship wise? And what is your financial reality? And what should your financial spending and management look like? Over the next four days, which are traditionally days of pulling back and repose, by the time you get to the 12th, 13th before the new moon, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because as I said, there's all this energy that's propelling us and you may feel, and this is talks to the second thing I want you to do, you may feel a lot of anxiety and energy to start to make things happen. Just know and keep in mind that the new moon does not occur till for me, for example, Thursday, uh, for some of you on Friday. Um, and then once the new moon occurs and we get that energy coming back in, you're going to have to give it the weekend. You're going to have to give it till, you know, it's Sunday when I'm taping this. You're going to have to give it till next Monday, not tomorrow Monday, but till a Monday after that for things to really feel like they're moving forward. This is going to create some anxiety in certain cases, depending on what part of the chart all this is active in and what you're trying to solve. It does not mean that you should not be in action this week. Plant the seeds if you like. Some people would say only plant the seeds after Thursday. I would say use the reality of your life and what you're trying to create to do what you feel you need to do. If there are opportunities, if there are meetings, if there are interviews, if there are emails, if there are communication, there are things that have to be done and you don't want to wait to do it, use your judgment. Use your judgment. You're in the driver's seat. You know, who's to say that if you send something out tomorrow or day after that you won't get a reaction to it? after Friday or into next Monday. But if you wait till next Monday, then it might, you know, I, I'm going to let you determine what your energy is with regard to the new moon. And you know what the urgency is with regard to what you're dealing with and what your situation is. And let the opportunities that are in front of you dictate where you are putting your energy into. But, you know, it's not, the next four days are not the time to close the shutters and just stay at home and tune yourself out. I think that there's going to be a push and pull of energy that is going to require action. And I think especially by the time you get to Wednesday, Thursday, maybe even part of Tuesday, you're just going to find that you don't have a lot of, you're going to find that you are spent. You'll find that you are sleeping a lot more at night or quick to fall asleep or just kind of needing to purge, ready for that new moon on Thursday evening or Friday morning, ready to get that energy back. Now, comes to the second thing that I think you should do. So the first is lessons around anything related to Venus retrograde and full moon. That things that you feel, lessons around things that blew up or got too emotional and no matter who's at fault, kind of processing them because you might actually find yourself in conversations with others too, to some extent, trying to process things over the next few days. Uh, I don't know to what extent it's advisable with Mercury still retrograde and slowing down, but it's certainly something you may seek to do, is to is to uh, dot the I's and cross the T's on past issues and put that full moon to Pisces to bed. And now that Venus is re direct, nothing wrong with revisiting what Venus retrograde kind of crystallized for you or taught you. The second thing I would do is I would use the next three or four days to gain some momentum and have a plan of action around what you want to build in the Virgo part of your chart and how you want to use what you want to build in the Virgo part of your chart to manage anything that the full moon in Pisces or the crises in Pisces um, that have been going on since 2013, 14, 15, um, how you're going to use the Virgo part of your chart and the new moon in the Virgo part of your chart energy, what you're going to intend there, what you're going to build there um, after the new moon, but we've already got planetary activity. We've already got Venus direct in Leo. We've already got, you may find that you're actively taking some steps even the next three or four days as well, unless you're just gonna, you know, put your feet up completely. I'm, as I said, I'm not gonna take responsibility for your decision-making there. I'm not in conversation with each of you directly. I don't know what to tell you as far as that's concerned. But the bottom line is the second thing that you could do, and neither of these things have to take a ton of time, uh, because these next four days, increasingly, as you get to Wednesday, Thursday, there is an element of repose and an element of 
rest, processing, closing out the last lunation, preparing. Any actions that you take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, prior to the new moon, you could take actions that you feel that are preparing you for the new moon. That could be one way to look at it, whether it is restful introspection or whether it is actual action being taken so that you can see if after the new moon, whether there's some sort of activity around it or whether things start to turn around. Any actions that you take over the next four days or so could be actions that you're taking to support the new moon. And that might help you see or understand what to do. I know it's a complex time. I'm, I'm addressing it because you hear all these things astrologically from people around, well, I'm not going to do this until after the 15th. And I'm not going to do this. And just like, you can't just, <sighs> don't miss opportunities either. You know, and even if nothing materializes from the opportunities of the next three or four days, there'll be lessons that, be, that will be learned. There'll be things to process. You will, the, the moon's, disappearing into nothing, you'll feel and you'll know when you can't do it. You'll know when you need to rest. You'll know when you need to repose. So the second thing I do want you to focus on is what is it that you want to, to use a very 2023 word, manifest in the Virgo part of your chart that is both going to make that part of the chart flourish, support the Taurus part of your chart because the new moon in Virgo is trying Uranus and Taurus and opposite Neptune and Pisces. Support the Taurus part of your chart. Support the upcoming eclipse on October 28th in Taurus. But also contend with and manage whatever it is that the Pisces full moon on the 30th of August highlighted for you as a new reality or an old reality related to crises that go back to 2013, 14, 15, 16 in the Pisces part of your chart. So number one, is not really focused on the signs in the houses. It's just asking you to look at, at this point in time where you're at, what you have learned and what your lessons moving forward are with regard to your relationships, your financial management. And if something occurred that was full moony, emotional, complicated, conflicty around August 30th, September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, or thereabouts that you're still processing and still thinking that still has weight on you, and it has those weights because you have to process the lessons around them. It doesn't matter who's at fault, especially think about what it is that you could have done. And it will be things that you could have done that were more sober, that were more responsible, that were more considerate of how you could have done something that may not have had a certain reaction. Saturn is all about consequence. And Saturn is the classic, you know, I often say to clients, um, it, you know, you can be right or you can be effective. Now, the truth is you can be right and effective <coughs> or you can be right and ineffective. But I find that if we focus on being right, very often we are right and ineffective. Does that make sense? And that's a very Saturnian statement. Saturn is interested in being effective and being successful. And understanding and teaching us how it is that sometimes our actions and what we contribute to a situation can fuel the flames. So that even if someone is wrong and we're right, could we have handled certain things differently so that things could have been more productively and more effectively handled? And number two, bring your attention back to your chart if you know it, Where's Virgo? Where's Pisces in the chart? What house do they occupy? What do those houses stand for? What are you going to build in the Virgo part of the chart that is going to be in harmonious support of the Taurus part of your chart, but also is going to contend with and help you manage the realities in the Pisces part of your chart that need addressing, whether it is crises that go back to 2013, 14, 15, 16, or the current reality is highlighted by the full moon on August the 30th conjunct Saturn, okay? Um, I know there's all this other stuff that we should be talking about that you might be impatient to. Jupiter's retrograde and Mercury's going direct and Venus is now direct and I've addressed some of those. I'm willing to put money on the fact that what is in this video is where a lot of our energy probably is going and should be going because we've, we've Jupiter's in Taurus, we've addressed all the houses that are being impacted by all these 
uh, transits, and I will talk about them. I will talk about them in future videos now that I'm, uh, now that I, now that I have made it through my own busy period. Feel free to like, share the video if you found it useful, tell your friends about the channel, subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe, click on the bell icon next to it, and on top there'll be a wiggly bell option. Click on that, you'll be notified whenever I do new videos. Um, use the email address in the description below to contact me for readings if you're interested, and I will leave it at that and be in touch with you soon. Thank you.